Hi, I'm Valerie Hector, and in this video I'm going to show you eight different beaded hair ornaments made in China from about the year 1900, give or take. Um, all of them, or most of them, feature these beaded elements either set within wires or attached to wires that often have silk wrappings around them in different colors of silk thread. And then all of them together are attached to this metal uh, bar or rod, right? Probably made of brass or some other metal. And the back is almost as beautiful as the front. You can really see the workmanship here, the level of detail, um, and how there's a combination here, a fantastic combination of symmetry. Like these two branches are symmetrical, but also asymmetry, and that the elements sit in different positions and they're not making a great effort to match one element here with another element over there. They're letting it be, you know, they're mixing, they're, they're making a complementary balance here of symmetry and asymmetry. All sorts of different bead materials were used to create a lot of these uh, beaded hair ornaments. Most of them, I would say, actually. Like, for instance, I think these are some kind of uh, hard stone possibly jade, but maybe not, probably not jade, given the expense of jade. I don't know. I've never had these tested, but they're pierced. You see how delicately they're pierced? Um, this one looks like it's broken here at the top. Something's broken off, which is very typical because these have quite a bit of age and wear, okay? Um, you see uh, traces of kingfisher feathers kind of dirtied now, um, glued to cardboard backing, small cardboard backings here and there and here and here, just to give it some sparkle, some flash. I think in its day, this, well, clearly would have been a lot sort of prettier and fresher than it is right now, having survived many decades. Um, these are likely to, these orange beads are probably coral here, and I love their irregular shapes and how beautifully, despite their irregular shapes, the beaders have incorporated them into these floral wire frames, all handmade, of course, and the floral frames wrapped with this beautiful red thread, possibly silk, I don't know. Other elements of coral here, not a bead per se, but probably a small branch of coral here and here, one here and one here, and not just coral. I think this might be amber, you know, this element here, probably amber, but I'm not sure. I don't know what this element is, if it's some kind of glass or carnelian. I'm talking about this one here. I, I don't know what it is. Um, and this, this jewel, pink jewel, it's a flat back, we would call it, with a two holes in it. I don't know if this is European um, or not. You know, the Chinese did make elements kind of like this um, in the 20th century, possibly earlier, probably definitely earlier. So I don't know, I need to do more research on this one. I don't know what these are made of here. Could be some kind of glass, could be some kind of stone. One of them is pierced. <clears throat> Excuse me, this yellow one here is pierced. And this one isn't pierced. There are little cuts made into the bottom of this shape so that the wires can wrap around the little cuts, right? Absolutely brilliant construction, just beautiful, okay? I want to show you one more that has some um, coral beads on it as well. And that's this one, you know, much simpler, just uh, tiny coral beads um, encased or, or worked within, set into wires um, and within these uh, frames, floral, they look like flower petals really, that have been wrapped in uh, probably red silk thread. And, you know, some of these red silk threads look so fresh and so new that I'm wondering if they've been re-wrapped, you know, in the recent decades. I don't know. I can't imagine that the original red threads were quite this bright. In any case, you've got a bat here. A bat um, is a, in Chinese, fu, it's a homonym for good fortune or good luck. Um, and bats bring good fortune, okay, in China. But another flat, long flowering branch here, um, where all, all of the elements are connected to a couple or two or three long branching wires. Very simple stem here, how everything is simply wired to this 
metal stem, which I think has a hole in it right there. Okay, just a simple, beautiful example. You can imagine one or two of these um, in, stuck into a woman's hair, just bringing an added touch of elegance um, to her hair and decoration, femininity too. Now, there were also um, hair ornaments made in China that really remind me of um, kind of Victorian pearl hair ornaments. Uh, am I wrong? I don't know. Is this an, an original, authentic, an indigenous Chinese structure and shape for a hair ornament? I don't know. Um, I wonder, I'm not sure, but I wonder if this one has lost its stem or if it never had a stem to begin with, if it was just kind of a covering um, for a bun, a hair bun or something. Um, at any rate, look look at the delicacy here, how the wires are so delicately structured um, in layers actually here, and they're covered, first the wires are, I think first the wires are covered with silk, um, and then they're beaded, but I could be wrong. Maybe they're beaded first and covered with silk later. At any rate, as far as I can tell, these are tiny blown glass beads. I hope I'm getting that term right. Um, they're irregular, so they really look like small pearls, right? Um, but if you kind of press one between your nails, you find that it shatters right away. Uh, here we have in the middle here a Chinese, what I think is probably a Chinese glass bead. I wonder if these are European blown glass beads, um, but I'm not sure, okay? And here's another one here. Same general concept here. Let me pull this one back. You know, same general concept, um, but just a little worked a little bit differently. You know, almost, almost reminds me of, you know, a, a stage curtain that's been pulled back or something in terms of the structure here. Right, but these beautiful curvilinear loops, almost paisley-like loops and spirals, so delicate, you know, so refined. Let's look at the back of this one. Yeah, you know, you can kind of, looking at the back of this one, I do get more of a sense that this one lost its stem, that it once probably had a stem. But just the refinement, you know, the level of grace and delicacy. And again, when these were fresh and new, they probably were prettier. They might have been a lighter shade of white or this soft uh, eggshell color. I really don't know. But a fascinating genre. Um, and I haven't seen, well, actually, I haven't seen almost any of these published. Um, but these, this subgenre especially, okay? Now, some... Chinese beaded hair ornaments were made with glass beads. This is probably a phoenix, um, symbolic of femininity and of the bride um, on her wedding day. And what is this here? It's a Chinese beaded dodecahedron, right? Um, that's used as the head of the phoenix, accented with little red glass beads for the eyes, right? And little multicolored glass beads for the beak. And the, the neck um, is beaded with, these are Chinese glass beads here. Um, and then the wings are beaded with what I think are probably Chinese glass seed beads here. And um, for the, the back wings, um, the feathers on the back wings, I guess you would say, these might be Bohemian glass beads. In other words, made in Europe, um, because there are beads very much like this, blown glass, mirrored blown glass beads, in a book um, published by the great uh, scholar Waltraud Neuwirth, I think is how her name is pronounced. And she writes in German with some English translations. Um, and you can look up her books, or I'll put a link to some of her books in the description below. Anyway, what a brilliant, simple structure. Now, when this was worn, of course, it it would it would be visible as a full, the wings are what would mostly be visible um, on the back of the woman's hair, okay? Um, I just think this is absolutely brilliant. Here we have two black bugle beads here. I don't know what these little orange beads are. Here again, I think we get what are, you know, I don't know if these pearls are real seed pearls or if they're glass or blown glass, I'm not sure. 
but just another beautiful, modest example of a vernacular um, beaded hair ornament, meaning worn by women of the, not the imperial court, not the wealthiest of the wealthy, and not the poorest of the poor, but the women in the middle whose families could afford to buy them uh, beaded hair ornaments, okay? Many of these came in pairs. I'm not showing all the pairs here. I don't always have all the pairs. They're not always available. Sometimes one member of a pair just doesn't survive the decades. And here's another one here. Um, also, mostly glass beads with one, what might be a stone plaque or platelet here that doesn't have a hole in it, right? But it forms the body of what might be a butterfly or a dragonfly. I really don't know. These again look a lot like these beads, look like mirrored blown glass European beads, possibly imported into China, um, certainly by the end of the 19th century, maybe even before then. This incredibly delicate um, metal, I'm trying to think what to call it, uh, can't think of the name of it right now, but what this adds is a layer of movement, you know, delicacy um, and grace, okay? So as the woman would move these little, the antenna of the butterfly or the dragonfly or whatever this is, would also move, you know, drawing a little bit of attention um, to the back of her head, to her hair. Um, these, I've seen these referred to as atlas glass beads. These are striated, mostly opaque, maybe somewhat translucent, blown glass beads, which might also have been from Europe. They're also in Waltraub Neuwer. So book, I think Glass Pearl, Glass Pearl, or I Chris Baumschmuff, I can't think of the name of it, but I'll write it in the description. Um, and if you, these are very fragile, right? This flower here, I think it's made of some kind of waxed paper. I could be wrong. I haven't made a study of this yet. But even look at the back, you know, how brilliant um, this dye or this coloring still is after all these decades, you know. And how this uh, hair pin here, this metal rod is split into two parts, forming kind of an elongated U shape. Um, the mate to this one is similar but different worked in different uh, atlas bead colors here. Um, these two, I think, are blown glass beads from uh, European bead making industries, okay? Now we have two more to go. Um, here. Um, this one features these very, very thin, uh, pointy, uh, dark green, triangular shapes here, which I don't know what these are made of. I don't know if these are Chinese glass. They do have decorations on the surface that looked, maybe there are, I, I won't um, hazard a guess as to how these are made. I don't think they're stone because of the patterning on the surface, but excuse me, maybe they are. These uh, round green glass donut shaped beads here look as if they might have been made in China because of the irregularity of the shapes. I really don't know. Uh, these, I don't know if these are beads here or cabochons, I'm not sure. But everything is interlaced with these blown glass pearls or what to the novice like me. Uh, I'm not a bead scholar, I'm a beadwork scholar. These look like blown glass pearls, the kind that were made in Europe, okay? And what are these pink beads here, but uh, seed beads with color linings, okay? Certainly these were made mm, probably not in China because they look like they're drawn, drawn glass beads um, as opposed to wound beads. Though I think the Chinese did make some drawn beads too. Um, but these can be traced probably, I'm guessing, to some European uh, glass bead maker. In, in the 20th century, if not the late 19th century. I just have to work on that, okay? We have other what look like European glass beads here, kind of an emerald green, okay? Here is a Chinese green glass teardrop. It looks like a teardrop, a pierced teardrop. Beautiful blown glass pearl up here. Look at the back. I find the, the back of this piece as beautiful as the front. Look at the construction. 
you know how carefully this has been made if you've ever made any for instance uh, french beaded flowers you know exactly how intricate these structures are and how much work has gone into um getting them to stay within the wires okay setting them not bezel setting them but um, encasing them in, in wire frames while still allowing them to be seen from the back and from the front okay um, I don't know, excuse me, what this uh, hairpin is made out of, if it's made out of some kind of brass or some other um, substance. It almost looks like silver or some kind of silver. I really don't know, okay? But there is a hair ornament of this general type. I did come across it um, on the website of a museum. And it was collected by a very well-established, um, well-known collector long about, I'm going to say, and I could be wrong here, uh, 1905, 1908, something like that, I think. I'm fairly sure. So, you know, there are parallels that can be found occasionally in the museum record, but not that many. This seems to be a genre that's not well documented. All of these hair ornaments, vernacular hair ornaments, are not too well documented. As far as I know, not yet anyway. Um, here's another one. We get this um, bat motif here, and the bat's body seems to be formed by, I don't know, it looks like a glass cabochon. Um, I don't know, I haven't studied this yet. These little pink uh, glass petals are probably were probably made in China. They have in single holes at the in the tip of the petals here, and they're interspaced with what look like uh, blown glass pearl beads or pearlized blown glass beads. I don't know. I have to ask my friend Jamie Allen to help me identify or just to identify uh, these beads with greater precision. Um, down here we have, what are these? Gem-like uh, elements probably made out of glass, almost certainly made out of glass, right? Um, do they have holes on them? It seems like, yeah, they have holes within them or through them. The, the holes that are hidden on the front here, but you, you can see them on the back. Okay. Um, flowers. This is a, looks like a knot motif, a panchang motif, which in China symbolizes or, or evokes longevity, you know, an endless lifespan, a long life. And here, look at look at what these blown glass pearls are doing up here. Um, each is attached. They're strung in threes, sets of three, on three wires, okay? And the three wires are attached to a larger wire. Look at the precision and the amount of effort that's gone into just this one piece, okay? How many days would it take to make this? Could it be made in one day? Um, I really don't know. Um, these green triangular elements, probably glass. Um, they are somewhat translucent. They're incised. Um, they have motifs on the surface, as we saw with this. But these are a little more rounded than these. These are rather crude, seem, seem rather flat and crudely cut, finished, crudely finished. And these are more delicate, it seems to me, okay? But again, just even looking at the backs of these pieces. You see how much ingenuity, how much creativity Chinese beaters had in this one genre. Granted, these might be workshop pieces, you know, made in multiples, probably workshop pieces made in multiples, but still layers and layers and decades of creativity in this one genre. All right, so I just wanted to give you a sense of the fact that this genre even exists and that if you come across things online, please send them to me, share them with me. I'd love to see them. Um, and in future videos, I will share more examples, um, if not in this genre, then in other genres of Chinese beadwork. Okay, thanks for coming by. If you like what I'm doing here and you want to see more of this kind of video, please subscribe. Okay, like this video and subscribe to it. it means a lot to me. Thank you. I'll see you in the next video.